never had one of these moving mics, so I'm feeling really like, Brr. okay. So um, my name's Karen Tardrew. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. I uh, am a professor at National Lewis University, which is in Chicago, but uh, Jerry and I are from our Wisconsin campuses, and I am uh, the Wisconsin academic director up there. We do graduate education for teachers. So I've been involved in teacher education for 22 years now. Um, Hair color does a does a wonder wonderful job, and um, uh, recently, well, it wasn't that recently. I don't know about five six years ago um, when I went up for tenure. Um, you know, we went through the traditional dossier uh, experience, and um, after I got tenure, it was very traditional, very cumbersome process. Uh, you know, with all your narratives and you have to provide evidence and all that kind of jazz. And what I um, what I've been doing recently since then is a lot of my scholarship work has been about, um, especially in Wisconsin with um, the recent changes in our state government and, um, and uh, uh, teacher and the money that we lost to, to education in Wisconsin, I've been, a lot of my work has been about um, holistic care of teachers, teacher wellness, teacher resiliency, and that sort of thing. Uh, and my personal interests it, have always been in photography and the visual arts. So I've been using photography and imagery and self-study uh, over the last several years, uh, looking at ways that we can look at our teacher identity, um, ways to improve teacher wellness, teacher resiliency through photography. So I've been doing that with, my, with the teachers that I work with that are generally getting master's degrees in education in curriculum and instruction. They're all practicing teachers from kindergarten teachers to high school teachers. Uh, but what I found is I'm kind of at this mid-career, let's not say midlife crisis, we're calling it a midlife awakening, and I found that um, it, I, as I was doing work with my teachers, I really felt like it was time for me to do my own sort of uh, deep look at um, lessons that I've learned at this point with my teaching career, and as we... Um, Many of us even, I don't know where you guys are, what your setting is if you're an art setting or a school setting, but more and more layers of bureaucracy and paperwork and things like that, and layer and layer. And we're kind of, um, I'm trying to kind of think about, strip away a little bit the things that brought us, or at least that brought me to education in the first place and why I love to teach. Um, because I love to teach teachers and I feel like we're getting further and further away from that. So I use visual metaphors um, so this was my own look at this, and it was a, kind of an alternative uh, uh, piece that I shared uh, with the university as opposed to just the regular narratives and artifacts and scholarship evidence. I talked about lessons that I've learned at this point after working with teachers for 22 years now, so and the lessons that I've learned. So I'm going to have you guys be a little interactive. So I'm going to show, and these are all photographs that I took. And, um, and Jerry's gonna keep me on a short leash here for his, my time so I can get talking. So anyway, um, so I'm gonna, uh, there's not a lot, but I'm gonna first show you my visual, my, fo my photograph, and I want you to just think about what kind of teaching metaphor could, uh, there could be, and then I'm gonna give you my examples as we go. And it's sort of a visual uh, story, if you will, uh, with metaphors and my lessons about teaching at this point in the mid-career. So um, that's just, okay, we're going to come back to that. So here's the first one. And um, so just think, jot it down, think about it. Can anybody think of, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? What? Peaceful. Earth science. Earth science. Okay. I'm going to have to like, keep, we're, we'll interact, but we'll have to keep it kind of. Um, okay, so for me, this is the metaphor of being on the edge. And um, sometimes we feel, so this is my narrative that goes with it. Sometimes we feel that we're out on a limb, out on the edge alone. It's important in life to bo both personally and professionally to take a stand on the edge. Maybe sometimes we feel small, barely hanging on, and like you're going to fall off. But if we don't stand on the edge and push ourselves, we can lose ourselves and our passion that drives us as human beings. And I've found that a lot recently with the kind of work that my teachers had to do in Wisconsin when they were protesting and all those things. Those, uh, you know, I had teachers that were protesting that had never uh, taken such a stand and felt so vulnerable. And the kind of awakening that happened when we did that was really, really powerful. Okay, so here's another one. 
Jerry's laughing, so. What? Defeat. Shame. Regret. Okay, uh, I call this, seriously, how embarrassing. Um, okay, so it's critical to have a sense of humor in life. And some of my greatest learning opportunities as a teacher and a person um, have been embarrassing moments. Uh, everyone makes mistakes or will do ridiculous things. In teaching, students rarely let you forget those moments, and especially when you're teaching adults, they won't let you forget ever. Uh, so I truly take them in stride, and I try to use it as a chance for growth, humility, humor, and change. And I think the humility piece is really important, especially when you're working with teachers, because um, that the human, the humanness of your relationship with your students is so important, and then you kind of, uh, reduce boundaries and to kind of be able to take it to that next level. I might stretch you guys really hard today. What? Bountiful. Bountiful? There's no wrong answer there. Variety? Okay. That, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Okay, so my lesson here is we're all different, but in the end we're all fruit. Okay? <laughs> So um, my teaching background before academic life was in special education, and I believe that it's critical to differentiate instruction and meet the needs of all students. Like fruit, yes, we are all fruit, but different kinds of fruit. Some fruit needs to ripen slowly, yet some ripen fast. Indeed, one size does not fit all. The most difficult aspect of finding ways is to challenge students is to become them, their best selves and to push them to new places that uh, they did not expect. It's also important to allow students to grow from where they start from in their journey. That's, um, it's highlighted in the work that I do. In teaching teachers, some are first year teachers and others are master teachers with 18 years of experience. So this creates a unique challenge in my, in my teaching and my, and my teach in a cohort setting um, to challenge and inspire all students when I have such a diverse range of, of um, teaching ability and, and, and teaching experience. Remember, some students have that soft skin like a peach. It's fragile and delicate on the outside, but juicy and full of zest on the inside. And it's our job as educators to bring out the zest. All right, I'll give you this one. Uh, let's get in line. Even though um, I believe it's important to highlight the need to be an, an, in, an individual, it's just as important to help students find order out of chaos and where they fit in a larger group um, or in society or in a classroom. It's our job as educators to gently guide our students to meet shared goals and outcomes. We need to help them to work as a group and let others get in front of the line. Sometimes we have to help them take the back of the line so that others can go first. Sometimes we need to work together for a greater goal. Um, often, so I teach in a cohort setting, so I have a group of teachers generally for two years through a program to get their master's degree. And um, teachers are amazing people and they're usually very strong individuals. So when you have a whole group of teachers, there's a lot of strong energy there. And, um, and, and it's important to uh, let everybody have a chance to be in the front of the line or kind of take the back seat. And that's really hard. Um, it's really hard as you're working with adults um, when they're trying to be their best selves and they're just all trying to run you know, to the front and trying to make it more of a collaborative atmosphere and working as a group um, to, to, to a greater end. This is right outside my window in my office. Um, okay, so this is nurturing the fragile gifts. I think one of my greatest gifts is my ability to nurture students and their gifts. Every student, every person has amazing gifts to share in our classroom community, and it's my goal to help nurture and care for those gifts. I do a great deal of self-study and autobiographical life history work with my teaching, and my students attest to, its, uh, to the importance of the, this work. It helps them become reflective teachers and critical thinkers, and it also highlights the gifts that they bring to their classroom life. Working in a cohort setting, I spend um, probably the first whole quarter together doing very deep autobiographical work as teachers. Um, one of my mentors, uh, Linda Tappel, who was one of our deans, talks about a Venn diagram of being a teacher with two circles, and I 
can't do it, but you know, to, like if you have another career or a job, it's probably very much like this as an artist as well. Your teacher self and your uh, person self, um, if in many careers, can be separate. But as a teacher, they they completely overlap. And I bet, and as artists as well, I think that. So to be to really unpack all that autobiographical journey in a in a safe space really helps us become better educators. But um, sometimes that's a hard journey to do, and you have to really. Um, be careful uh, with with feelings and um, and taking care of people's souls and all that. Okay, ten minutes. All right. Okay, I'm getting there. All right, I'm losing my interactive people. All right. Okay. Um, so this one is go with the flow. Uh, teaching is a complex process. I truly believe that the best instruction allows for the flow of ideas, even though it's important to follow course objectives. More importantly, the passion and educational flow of the context is critical to a vital, to vital classroom life. The best learning occurs when students feel a sense of purpose for, an edu for the educational material. I create opportunities for brainstorming, and in my classroom, we also create a shared learning agenda. It's not that you should let the class totally go with the wind, but flexibility and shared objectives is a key for success. A great example would be when we were going through the protests in Wisconsin, I had a group that was about to graduate, and that spring when we were having all the protests, and um, I had people coming to class that would be protesting all day, trying to finish their master's thesis, and just absolutely emotionally and physically exhausted, thinking they were gonna lose their jobs, like tears, and you know, so I brought in, we did hand massages, we did meditation, we like totally went off the rails because we could not, get to where we needed to until we took care of everybody in the room first. So sometimes you need to kind of go with the flow. All right, I'm gonna not let you guys guess anymore because we're running out of time. All right, so this is um, mystery. Oh, let me go back. Um, some students can be a mystery. <laughs> uh, I try to teach a deep level of understanding connection with all my students, but some students are harder to reach than others. I do not give up on these students, we're all complex human beings, and I work diligently to help students to feel safe. I help them feel part of the group. For some students, school or, class, a school or a classroom historically might not be a safe educational environment. Even as adults, I found this with teachers. Often, teachers really struggle, and many of them have become teachers because they had such an unsafe um, learning or educational experience. So then um, they can even be a deeper mystery because they're kind of walls. So for a variety of reasons, I don't, you know, I may not always reach those students, but I work tirelessly to help them feel safe and productive in our learning environment. And I think that's been a really hard lesson for me to learn is like sometimes you don't, you don't reach everyone and it's really, really hard. This one's called the light through the trees. Often it's hard to find the light between the trees. When things become cumbersome and difficult, it can be hard to see the light. I find this both true personally and professionally. We all have fast, um, face difficulties and adversity. Personally, the last several years have been very difficult for me, and professionally, it's also been quite challenging. There's been a lot of changes at our university. Yet, you really need to see the light through the trees. You can find the best in people, hope, a dif hope in a difficult situation, support when you need it, and we all need to find the light of hope to guide us on our best journey. I'm almost done, Okay. This one is, it's endless, and I find this every time when I come to IVLA in particular. We are on a journey of lifelong, lear lifelong learning, and it's endless. Just when you think you've figured it out, you didn't. <laughs> and as educators, we need to make sure that we're smack dab in the middle of this process with our students, muddling through right along, I, and that I find that the more you know, the less you know. That's why being an educator is the best job in the world. We can stumble through this reflective process together, and we continue to ask harder and harder questions. This is Lessons of the Tree. Uh, did you know that the uh, individual aspen tree lives for about 100 years? However, aspens reproduce by sprouting their roots, uh, uh, sprouting shoots from their roots. This allows them to grow in a cohesive grove. Even fire won't kill a grove of aspen trees as the roots remain alive. A grove is actually a living organism and it can reach thousands of years old. I believe that that's the power that we serve as educators. We're growing roots like aspen trees. We're deeply connected as a learning community and the knowledge and spirit we impart in our students, in my case educators, become one amazing symbol of strength of community. This cohesive community we can create 
makes the greater tree possible, the tree of society. My last one. These are my kids a long time ago. <laughs> um, joy. When, it, when it's all said and done, it comes down to one thing, joy. We need joy in our lives as human beings. It, I get a great deal of joy from my family and friends, but I get an amazing amount of joy teaching. I truly love my students, and they inspire me to be a better person and a teacher every day, and I'm grateful for the joy that they give me. So I hope through this visual exercise, it helped you grow as a professional, or at least think about um, the potential. For instance, in viewing the fruit photo, did you consider a student that had once challenged your teaching methods? Or if you looked on the edge photo, did you comp comp uh, uh, contemplate the times that you were on the edge, or a time that you had wished you had taken a stand? Imagery is powerful, and it's taken us to a deeply personal place in our minds for growth beyond conventional understanding. So, thanks. Any questions?